Okay. Uh, good evening, everybody on YouTube. It's Simon Seeds. Uh, I'm recording this video tonight in response to uh, Ben J. Morris, uh, one of the associate editors at Marvel uh, uh, Marvel Comics, on the podcast This Week in Marvel. I'm which I'm a frequent listener to and contributor to a maniac, if you will. And his, uh, he made a comment to a tweet I made on the most recent episode, episode 42. If you want to uh, listen to it, I, you know, I don't know if I can actually play the audio and this, you know, legal reasons and whatnot. But at about an hour and six minutes in, he responds to a tweet I made about how, you know, Marvel their upcoming event in Marvel now, but how I noticed how there weren't, so far there haven't been any minority characters that have been announced. So, and his response, I didn't feel like I could really accurately respond to it on Twitter in 150 characters, so that's why I'm making this video. And I will let you, uh, if, if you, if you, follow This Week in Marvel, go look for it, like I said, episode 42, at about an hour and six minutes. And I'm going to respond to his comment, and also, while I respond, that'll kind of, I kind of talk about issues of race in comics, and I mean, well, I'm going to focus on Marvel comics because of this, uh, this Week in Marvel podcast, but what I'm saying can be applied to DC as well. Now, like I said, I'm not sure if I can actually play the audio in this without for legal reasons. But uh, I'll summarize what he said. I mean, he did. He acknowledged that, yeah, they. First, well, first of all, he said, you know, not they haven't announced everything for this Marvel Now event, and you know, something might be coming down the pike. So, you know, I'm going to take that to mean that hopefully that means somebody will be, some characters of color will be getting their own books. But the thing, other things he said, and it, well, I mean, he did thank me for, you know, he said, you know, yeah, it's good that I bring this up. But then he also mentioned how, you know, they have minority characters in prominent roles already, and he brought up Luke Cage and Miles Morales. And then he talked about, the real issue I took with his statement was when he started talking about how, you know, we don't, the best characters are going to get the get the solo books, and you know we don't. It's all about the best. Who's the best character? It's not about race and gender. That is a problematic statement, and I feel. But I will. I'm gonna I'm gonna break it down. I'm gonna break down his statement, and then I'm going to. And while I'm doing that, that should talk about. I'll that'll bring up the issues of race, like I said, in comics. Now, first of all, uh, when he talked about Miles Morales, that was, you know, I was, what, what, Ultimate Spider-Man, I was, what happened, what I was afraid was going to happen with Miles Morales has happened now, that I feel like, I was afraid that Marvel was going to use him as a token, they were just going to bring him out every time they, now that when they get questioned about minority characters and issues of race in their comics, they're going to just say, well, uh, we have Miles Morales, so, you know, we ha so we're doing something with minorities. And, you know, I, I am very thankful for Miles Morales. Even, you know, Spider-Man has always been one of my favorite characters growing up. But I, ne I never thought I could be Peter Parker. I, you know, I, I see myself... I mean, I'm a lot older than Miles Morales. And yeah, he's not real, but still, I, you know, it's nice to see somebody that looks, that looks like me. But he shouldn't, he's pretty much holding it down by himself. And Luke, I'm not, yeah, I'm not reading Thunderbolts. The idea of that comic never really appealed to me. But you have two minority characters out of the dozens of books that Marvel is publishing. I think that's problematic. Now, to his other statements, which I, this is where it really gets to me, 
one about how you know it's about the best characters and we don't choose based on race or gender honestly that comes out of well this book here that I that I read over the summer by Eduardo Bonia Silva called uh, Racism Without Racist and I'm not calling Ben J. Morris a racist or saying that Marvel is practicing overt racism I'm not I believe I just believe these statements come out of a lack of understanding but in the book uh, in this book Bonia Silva he talks about how since the civil rights movement you, we don't you know being called a racist or being accused of racism that's almost a racial slur to white people that's their racial slur almost and we've come up with this sort of what he calls colorblind language to try to discuss issues of race without seeming racist and the comments Ben, J. Moore, ben Moore has made in response to my tweet would come straight out of this come straight out of this book saying that we you know it's not about race and it's only about the best character that is that's very good that's all well and good and I would like to see that but honestly I feel like if that were the case then there would be a more equal blend of a more more balance between white and non-white characters but so far we don't have that I mean of all I'm thinking about all the books I'm reading from Marvel right now. I'm, I'm reading, of course, Ultimate Spider-Man. I'm following Avengers vs. X-Men and Avengers vs. X-Men vs. Avenging Spider-Man, Fantastic Four, and now I'm reading Captain Marvel. So out of that, you only have Miles Morales. And just thinking offhand of all the other titles they have, uh, Captain America, Hawkeye, Gambit, X-Men. Oh yes, I'm reading X-Men as well. I almost forgot that. But uh, out of all these characters, out of all these books, all except for Miles Morales, the only solo character, he's the only solo character with a, that is a minority. Every other solo book is a white character. And I feel like that that is problematic. It it really is. We need I feel like that's the hashtag I use on Twitter all the time is comics need diversity. And I I don't believe that that it it's just I know I'm not the only person that feels that way. And I would imagine that there are plenty of white fans that feel the same way I do that get tired of seeing white faces over and over again. I mean, yes, I I respect Captain America and Iron Man and the Hulk, but I want to see why can't I see you know Black Panther or Psylocke or Danny Moonstar or Danny Moonstone or you know Forge Amadeus Cho White Tiger. There are plenty of minority characters that Marvel has that they are not. They're, they're not using. And I mean, even in team books, they, you know, Avengers, you'll have, you may see Falcon or War Machine in the background, but, you know, they, they haven't had any major stories. They haven't been a part of any major storylines. Now, if I, I may be wrong, because I'm not, the only AVX tie-in, I'm not reading any AVX tie-ins, except for X-Men. So I don't know what, uh, and I know Storm hasn't been very prominent in this book. Black Panther was prominent for a moment in AVX, but then AVX 9 happened, and I was very upset about that, but that's a whole nother, that would be a whole nother video. But this notion that, you know, we own the best characters, get books. I had the this you know I had the same conversation 
with Dan Slott. Uh, the weekend before Comic Con, actually, he and I had an exchange on Twitter because of an upcoming uh, storyline he's doing on Amazing Spider Man, where Spider Man gets a sidekick and it's uh, some uh, just white male teenager. And I told him, I felt, I tweeted, you know, I felt like that's a problem. And then he and I exchanged a little bit, and, uh, and when I, he brought up all the, you know, non-white, non-male characters that he's introduced in books, in the books that he's worked on, I just said, yeah, that's, uh, that's cool. How about we, it'd be cool to see some of these characters get their own books. And then he told me, you know, the best characters are the ones that get, the characters that can sell a book are the ones that get solo books. And I pointed out to him, I said, yes, maybe that's true, but just for, for the most part, most of the time, those characters are white. And so why is that? And then he brought up, you know, Marvel, well, we put out diverse comics, but, you know, readers don't buy them. And that is problematic as well. Uh, I, I won't go so far as to say that's, you know, an excuse. But it's, it's, I feel it's a simple formula. But, it, I mean, this reasoning I've heard from him and others doesn't make sense to me. I mean, because, I mean, if, well, I mean, if we're going to trot out Miles Morales as a token, look at how his book has done. Because it's, he's, and it's doing a simple formula. Good writing. I know some people don't like Brian Michael Bendis' run on Avengers, but all, his, his Spider-Man is very good. Good art by Sarah Pacelli and whoever else is working on the book, and they're promoting it. You know, all these Marvel books I'm reading, whenever they mention Ultimate Mar the Ultimate Universe, Miles Morales is front and center, and that's why his book is doing so well. Good art, good writing, and promotion. So if you can do that for Miles Morales, why can't you do that for an, any of your other minority characters, for Black Panther, Falcon, Luke Cage, uh, White Tiger, Psylocke, Firestar, not, I'm sorry, not Fire, Sunfire. Oh, boy, I know YouTube, y'all are going to tear me up for that. But, you know, you have, I think sometimes you may be under Marvel, and, or just the comic industry in general may underestimate how this what the self-esteem that has for for a person of color, uh, for especially for children, to see somebody that looks like them as as a hero in the starring role, not just as a as a background character or the token on a team, but well, no, actually, I just thinking back on my childhood, you know, I I'm I'm a Marvel fan. I I grew up watching the cartoons, you know, Spider Man, X Men, Iron Man, and that made me feel that did a lot for my self esteem when I watched, you know, when I got to see Storm and X Men, or you know those episodes when Bishop showed up, or seeing War Machine on Iron Man, and especially uh, the Fantastic Four cartoon when Black Panther had this had to get started in an episode. That I was I was floored by that. I didn't know up until that point, all I knew of superheroes was Superman, Batman, and Spider Man and the Hulk. I didn't know that black heroes existed. But children, I think that's very important that we see more that we see it, that we have more non white characters being given prominent roles. Now, how do we go about that is a whole is a question I am still trying to figure out myself. But then you have, I mean, because so far, just from what I've been following with comics, there's been a lot made about gender, but not about race. And I'm not saying anything against gender because, you know, we we want the same thing. We want people who want 
you know, more diverse, we all want more diversity, whether that be in terms of race, gender, or sexual orientation. But now, it does, we, we have to make, I guess, you know, all these people, all of us who want more, who want to see more non-white characters in comics, we have to make our voices heard to the comic industry and and keep the pressure on because otherwise they will just trot out their token characters and hope will hope will go away. I mean, you know, you had last year you had uh, Tom Brevoort, who's one of Mar who's like Marvel's senior VP of, of publishing. He was talking about how you know they weren't going to do a Black Avengers book because it's contrived. And then when he gets questioned on it, he says, you know. Well, 99% of superheroes are white. So, and if you try to do anything else, you know, that's, you, it's indicative of, of an agenda, and that's not our job. We're just trying to make, we're trying to tell the best, most entertaining stories we can. And, yeah, I will provide a, I'll put a link in the show notes. But, and, now I'm not, I'll be nice about it, but best, most entertaining stories, that is a subjective term. And Marvel has put out plenty of stories starring, you know, white characters that I'm sure they believed in and they supported, but fans did not enjoy. So all I'm saying is, the, to Marvel and to the comic industry, take a chance. I mean, you've already, you have the formula with Miles Morales. Like I said, good story, good art, and promote the book. Promote it as much as you promote whatever crossover events you have going on that year. Promote it as much as you promote Spider-Man, Wolverine, and Avengers, and you will see, and the book will do well. And I'm trying to think, bring in more fans, because com the comic book industry is the only in, in, in the only the only medium in the entertainment industry where selling a hundred thousand copies is considered a hit. I understand that, you know, at the end of the day, they're trying to make money, but I'm just saying, if you bring in, if you have more min minority characters, and you promote them, and they do well, I think you're bringing more minority fans, and bringing in more fans means more money, and, uh, and even not just in comics, but just across the board, because I know right now, comics are not the way, the main way that these publishers make their money. Just look uh, look at movies. You know, right now they're going to have Marvel, they have coming up what is it? Iron Man 3, Captain America 2, Thor 2, Avengers 2, and Guardians of the Galaxy. So, you know, once again, all white characters, and I guess with Guardians of the Galaxy you got a talking raccoon and a sentient tree but you can't have but you know you have the one of the heads of Marvel Studios saying that you know we can't do a Black Panther movie right now because you know it Wakanda is too hard to do but you know you can do Asgard and everybody who saw the movie was saying like oh it, it looks just like you know a Jack Kirby panel come to life why can't you do that with, with Wakanda is I don't want to, I hope it's not, they don't think the idea of, you know, this super, you know, this African nation highly, that's more technological, like the most technologically advanced and wealthy society in the Marvel Universe is too hard to do because it's an African society, it's an African nation. And think about this, since 1998, when, uh, when Blade first came out, there have been 27 movies based on Marvel cartoon, based on Marvel comics. Whether Marvel made them themselves or whether it was Fox, you've had 27 movies. The most recent one being Amazing Spider-Man. And of those 27 movies, only three have had have been starring a person of color. And that's the Blade trilogy. Everything else, 
has been has starred white people. And I know some people are going to say, well, you know, what about what about X Men and what about Iron Man? Yes, Storm was in X Men, but she didn't have a very big role. She was a, a she was a co-star. She was a side character. Iron Man. Yes, you had Jim Rhodes, but he was again. He was just there to assist Tony Stark. He was he was not the main focus of he was not the main hero of the movie. He was he was the sidekick. He was the co-star. I mean, so much so that it that it didn't even matter that they had to go that they went and got a whole different actor to play the character in Iron Man 2. That shows how much they were concerned about that character. You know, you replace Don Cheadle for Terrence Howard. But all I'm saying is I'm gonna wrap this up now. There and say there's a lot to be done. Comics I you know, I'm a I'm a comic fan. I've I've always loved superheroes. But I just want to see more pe people that look like more superheroes that look like me and my classmates. So my classmates are Asian, Native American, Latino, uh, Muslim. We want to see more people that look like us. And I want to make things better for the next generation. I have, uh, you know, I want to get my little cousins into comics. But when I do, I want to be able to show them people that look like them. You know, my cousin's little girl, I, you know, for her birthday once I got her a Wonder Woman book. I wanted, because there wasn't anything age appropriate starring a, a, a black hero. You know, I, I, I'd love to give her a Storm Doll, or I'd love to give her a kid friendly Black Panther or, or War Machine, but that doesn't exist. And that's a problem. So I thank you for uh, thank you for your time. I'm gonna tweet this to Ben J. Morris. Hopefully he sees it. And in closing, comics need diversity. <laughs>